In this video, I show you how to configure Marlin 2.0 for the SKR 1.3 mainboard with TMC 2209 stepper drivers and sensorless homing and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. Our mission is to help 1 million people getting more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and enable bell notifications so you don't miss anything. This is part two of my SKR 1.3 build, just in case you missed the first part where I talk about the hardware installation on my AM8, formerly known as ANIT A8. I've linked that video up here. Today I'm going through all the Marlin 2.0 configuration steps before we can compile the firmware for the SKR 1.3 and then we'll have to do some fine tuning to the stepper motor settings to get sensorless homing to work on this printer as well. All the steps I'm doing are not really specific to this AM8, but can be applied to almost any other printer that you might have. So let's start with the prerequisites. You will need a computer with Visual Studio Code installed and the platform I.O and auto build Marlin extensions for Visual Studio Code. You will also need a copy of the Marlin 2.0 source codes on your computer pre-configured for your printer model. I've covered the required steps to get all this prepared in another video that I've linked up here so you can set your environment up correctly using that guide and learn how to combine Marlin firmware 2.0 with those tools. So let's start to modify configuration.h for the SKR 1.3. So in the author string, I'm gonna put Daniel's AM8 SKR 3 config just for my reference. Then scrolling down a bit, you have to change the serial port settings. The SKR 1.3 supports serial connection over USB as well as a secondary serial port that you could, for example, use to connect it directly to Octoprint using jumper wires. I want both serial ports to be available in the future. The first one will be set to minus one to mark it as the USB connection. And the second serial port is set to zero and we need to uncomment that line so it actually gets activated. I also wanna make sure that my serial connection speed is set to 250,000 so we have a higher speed. Around line 130, there is the define motherboard statement. Whatever is configured here currently, you need to change that to board BTT SKR V13. This changes everything required to build for 32-bit and the specific processor on the board. Then you can give your printer a name that is going to be shown on the printer display later. I'm using AM8 for now. Now let's come down to the stepper driver settings around line 686. I'm changing the X, the Y, the Z and the E0 driver to TMC2209. And that also tells Marlin that it's used in UART mode, otherwise it would be standalone. Just below those stepper motor settings, please disable and stop interrupts feature around line 705, just in case if it was enabled for your previous mainboard. At around line 1072, you will find the settings for the motor directions. It can absolutely be that you will have to change your motor directions after switching to TMC2209 drivers, but this depends on what you were using before. So you can just leave it as it is for now and we're going to test the motor directions later to make any necessary changes here. As I've told you in the hardware installation video last time, I'm currently using the ANET full graphics display. So I will make sure that I have enabled define speaker at around 1772, so it gives me feedback, for example, when I save my settings. And around line 2031, I have enabled A8 full graphics LCD. And at line 1842, I'm disabling the original A8 A8 zone star LCD. I will also make another video showing you how to install and configure the Big Tree Tech TFT35 touchscreen color display with the SKR mainboards. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and have the bell notifications enabled so you don't miss it. Okay, let's now open up configuration ADVH to make some more changes. In about line 593, I'm changing X home bump and Y home bump to zero as we are going to configure sensorless homing for this printer and that won't work with home bump anymore. And another change we need to make for the sensorless homing is around line 662 where we have to set X min stop inverting and Y min stop inverting to false because the sensorless homing doesn't require the end stop logic to be inverted anymore. 
Now let's scroll down to the TMC Smart section around line 2024 and below. Each depot driver can be configured to have its own current setting. That means how much current in milliampères is provided on average to the stepper motor. I will give you a short example. I'm using the Hamura extrusion system and the stepper motor for it is rated for a maximum peak current of 1.33 amps. That's 1330 milliamps divided by 1.414 gets me an RMS value of 940 milliampere. So I'm entering this value here in the E0 settings. For the other motors on this printer, I actually don't know the peak current value, so I'm gonna leave it on 800, which is the default. If I would see my motors becoming very hot, I would probably take down these values a bit to see whether that gets rid of the problem. On the other hand, if my printer would start skipping layers, I would know that this value is too low or that my carriage system has such a high resistance that I would need to fix that physically. Every stepper driver also has its own micro step settings. Currently that's set to 16 and you can increase it to a maximum of 256 on the TMC drivers. If you want to know what micro stepping is, I've put a link up here that explains it a bit more in depth for you. I'm going to leave micro steps on 16 for now. Make sure you also have define interpolate to true so any micro step values you might have configured elsewhere get correctly interpolated for example the steps per millimeter settings for any of your axes. Here around line 2236 make sure stealth chop is enabled for all stepper motors. This will make sure you are getting the least motor noise possible with these TMC drivers. Since I have my printer running on 24 volt, I'm also changing the chopper timing to 24 volt. So check what voltage your printer is running on and have it set accordingly. Next, I'm enabling monitor driver status. This adds some more G code commands to get and set the motor currents. It also enables monitoring of the drivers for over temperature. Marlin can use this to automatically reduce the driver current if your steppers overheat for some reason. Now a bit below that around line 2324, I'm enabling sensorless homing. Don't confuse that with sensorless probing, that's a completely different story, not recommended on this kind of printer setup. Then a bit below you see two values, the X stall sensitivity and Y stall sensitivity. Those sensitivity values determine the amount of sudden resistance on an axis so the TMC driver will think it's hitting the end stop. So it's really important to set this value just high enough that it detects the end stop, not higher, otherwise it might detect a little resistance of the printer nozzle scratching the build surface during a print as if it's hitting the end stop and this might stop your print. As soon as we installed the firmware for the first time, I'm going to show you how to approach the right value quite fast. A bit below those settings, I'm also enabling TMC debug, just in case I would like to see some debug output of the drivers if I run into any kind of issues later. So I think we're good to go. Let's open up the auto build Marlin extension and hit compile to see if we run into any issues. I get a compilation error, which reminds me friendly that I need to change the pin wiring to use the ANET full graphics LCD on the SKR 1.3. If we follow that link, it takes us to the explanation. There's a little guy what you need to do, which pins to swap and more. So to get rid of the compiler error, I just need to comment out that error message here and save the file. Let's try again to compile. Looking good, everything is compiling and we have a new firmware file. Now the easiest way to flash the firmware to the SKR 1.3 is to plug in the USB cable to the PC and hit the upload button in order build Marlin. You could also just copy the firmware bin file to the SD card and then insert it back into the printer. The upload function of AutoBuild Marlin copies the firmware bin file to the virtual USB drive that you will see once you connect the mainboard to the PC. In the end, it also just lands on the SD card. Now either switch the printer off and on or hit the reset button on the mainboard. In my case, I can actually trigger a reset directly from the display with this little button here. What happens now is the firmware gets flashed from the SD card to the main board. And as soon as the board boots up again, you will see that on the SD card, the file has been renamed to firmware.cur. That is the confirmation that your new firmware bin has been flashed and you can also use this file now as a backup and rename it so you can keep your old firmware file somewhere. Fine, the new firmware is flashed, it's running and the display is also working. Also using the push dial works fine to navigate the menu. 
but we will have to reset the EEPROM because the default settings that are configured in our firmware are not yet saved in the EEPROM. So we should make sure the EEPROM gets a reset to default values. There might also be an EEPROM related error on your display. That's also an indication to reset the EEPROM. Do this by entering the configuration menu on a printer and then go to the advanced settings menu. There scroll to the end and select the initialize EEPROM item. Confirm to init the EEPROM so everything is reset to the default values. Please don't do any auto home right now because we don't know yet if the motors move to the right directions. Let's check and fix that first and then take care of the senderless homing settings. First, I'm trying to move the X axis. I'm going into the printer's motion menu, then move axis, move X menu. And I will select 10 millimeters. And now if I turn the knob to the right to increase the value, it should move to the right. And yes, it's going to the right. Now let's check the Y axis. And here it's really important not to confuse the direction. When I send the printer a command to move the Y axis to a higher value, it should actually move the bat to the front because we're trying to move the nozzle to the back, all right? So it's actually moving in a wrong direction now. So I have to go to the configuration.h and invert the y direction to fix this. Finally, checking the z movement. If I try to move it up, it's moving up. That's correct. The only motor left to test is the extruder motor. And to test that, we need to heat up the nozzle first with some filament inserted. And once the temperature has been reached, I'm starting to extrude some filament is it moving the filament out? Yes, it's moving in the right direction, but it might be different for you. So really do every check for every motor. Very good. All motor directions are correct. Let's upload a new build to the mainboard now to fix the motor direction changes that we just made. Okay, we can now take care of tuning in sensorless homing. To do this, there is a configuration section in the printers menu quite deep inside. We have to go to configuration, advanced settings, TMC drivers, and sensorless homing. And here you can see that for all the axes, the default value of eight has been set. And we could now try to do an auto home and try if these default values are anywhere reasonable. But have your hand on the reset button or the power switch because the motors will most probably just continue to run and not stop. And that's what happened right now. So let's reset the printer and try some new values for the sensorless homing. And since we have a range from 0 to 256 in the case of the TMC2209 drivers, we should start right in the middle and use 128 as a starting point to see if that works. So in my case, sensorless homing worked fine for X and Y, but as I said in the beginning, we wanna have this value as low as possible for both axes so we don't get any false positives during printing. So what I'm going to do is to reduce the sensorless homing sensitivity to 64. And that's again in the middle of zero and 128. Now doing an auto home again. And we are crashing into both axes. So we are way too low with our values. After doing this kind of try and error, I landed at final values of 120 for the X axis and 128 for Y. So I was actually quite close in the beginning, but that's how it is. You cannot know the values up front. You have to approximate the right values by trial and error. So since we now know the values, we should save them to the EEPROM. If you ever recycled power or reset the printer during this process, you will have seen that the values you have set have been lost. So after having set the final values, go to the configuration menu again, and then use store settings to save your current settings. I'm also copying my final values to the configuration ADV.h section into the stepper driver X stall sensitivity and Y stall sensitivity settings. So if for any reason the EEPROM values get lost, these are the future default values. So the question of the day is, does it print and how does it print? Well, it actually printed this Benchy quite well. This was like one and a half hours and this one is a master spool. It contains two parts. The first part printed in 13 hours and the second part printed in 10 hours. And it also came out really, really well. And because this is the Hemera extrusion system on the AM8, I still owe you a final review on the print quality and the overall usage. So this is coming soon. On the SKR 1.3, I can say it really just works. 
I had no issues during these 20 hours of printing and I now can have all the features I've ever wanted because it has more memory, it has more ports, more anything. Next up in this series, I'm gonna cover the BL Touch installation. So make sure you don't miss that video and I've also linked to other videos here in these two cards for you. See you soon back on the channel. Bye bye.